This is exercise number 28 in the Paint with Lens series of short lessons. And today we'll paint a gum tree scene with a very pale background and a very strong foreground. With this scene we need two palettes. The first palette is ultramarine blue, plenty of white, crimson and raw sienna. With my one and a half inch flat house painting brush I'll pick up plenty of white and we'll spread it along the top of the sky. My paint's very thick, so I'll spray it with a little bit of water and thin it out. I do this quite often when working with acrylics. I call it magic white. Then load the tip of your brush with a little bit of ultramarine blue and brush it into the wet white paint. Don't worry about your brush strokes. Have them in all directions, but try and get that very pale tone. Not all the same tone blotches, bits and pieces, but all very pale tones. This is the mist. Use the very tip of your brush, don't force the brush on. Down here I'll put plenty of paint. I'll use this as my palette for a little while. A bit of ultramarine blue, a bit of crimson. Clean the brush. And we'll put quite a bit of white down there also. Mix yourself a blue that's slightly darker tone than the background and paint in mushroom shapes. Make them round. These blotches are clumps of foliage, trees in the mist. Not too dark. Try different brush strokes. Just a down, down brush stroke with the tip of the brush is okay. Or if you wish, you can paint in a round and round style to get a bit of a round effect. Do this all over your background in blotches. Try to keep the blotches organized in groups. Down the bottom, they're smaller because the trees are smaller. And in the middle of the bottom, we want to attract your eye, so have some very white spots. I'll put some pure white on there, but it will fade into the blue a little bit. If you look at gum trees, you'll see that they're shaped like mushrooms or umbrellas. Now while we're doing this, we'll try to keep things sloping into the picture. So most of the shapes are facing into the picture, as if the trees are leaning into the middle a little bit. Be careful not to do this. One, two, three, four. Don't do that. If you do find that, paint over it and blotch it out. You've got plenty of time with this. You can put more white paint on if your paint dries too quick. The tones of the blue can become a little bit darker along the edges of the painting, not too dark. Now let's paint in some tree trunks. I've loaded this half inch hog bristle brush with a little bit of soft blue, a little bit of white on the other side and put in little bits of tree trunks. Slope them into the picture and don't be too fussy with them. Just put them here and there. You can add some more later. And then with my little soft brush, a little bit of paint on, brush in a few fine branches here and there. And again, you don't need to be very fussy with them. Just brush them in. As long as they're not dark, leave them the same tone as a background. Here I'm putting them in with white paint just a few and again sloping into the picture. I see there's a bit of bare canvas there. I'll squirt it with a bit of water and brush in a bit of colour over it. I'm working in acrylics. Here on the edge of the painting we can go a little bit darker. We want our eye travelling into the middle of the picture so the dark on the edge of the painting stops the eye travelling off. These trees as they move forward of course they get bigger but they don't get very dark yet. A little bit of crimson on my brush there, not much, just a very little bit. And here we roll a little bit of white paint off the edge of the brush on the inside. The foliage under this tree is slightly darker, so we'll put some bushes under there just to fill in the spaces in the middle ground, not too dark. Then you can reload your brush with a little bit of pale blue and a little bit of white and brush in some ghostly looking tree trunks leaning into the picture. My paint's dry here, the underneath paint is dry so I need to put extra paint on to get it flowing well off the brush. And that'll do on that side for a while. We go across to the other side, and here we can have one coming in about here. Into the picture, that's another pale tree. Now we can start working on the middle ground. This is where the crimson comes in. I'll start working along here with a brush and introducing the crimson. Now that I've used crimson on this brush, whatever colour I pick up will have a little bit of crimson tint in it. And in the middle we want white. So 
So I'll pick up some white and brush it into the middle. Now let's mix a colour with tones of crimson. So when I'm coming forward, the crimson will be in every brush stroke. You won't see it, but it's there. We'll brush in the foliage here underneath the trees on the left. Just fill it in. You can just see that crimson, only just see it there in the foliage. Don't bring the crimson in too strong at this stage. Now we need another tree. I'll double load the brush and paint a tree in here with crimson in the tree. And you see how it moves forward. There's a bit too much crimson there, there's a little bit too much blue. So I'll paint over with the white. Up and down brush strokes. Don't fiddle around with it. Leave it rustic looking. And with your little brush, brush in a couple of prominent branches. These can be a little bit more defined than the branches behind. That one's a little bit too defined and it's pointing out of the picture. So I'll go over it with a bit of white and knock it back a bit so you can't see it so much. And a few rustic bits here and there. Now with my big brush, I'll fill in what is the foreground. Here we want pure colour, crimson and blue, both on the brush together. I did clean this brush before I picked up the darker colours, so don't let the white get in your darker colours. When we put the white on, we put the white over the top of the dark colours, just lay it on. And then dab, dab, dab a few little bits of grass here and there. You can paint grass with any brush, it's just a matter of how to use it. A bit more white in the middle. You could have water here if you wanted to, you see that? If you want to put water, you can put water in yours. I'll leave mine as ground level. Dab, dab, dab a few more little bushes and grass and a bit more grass here in the foreground. This area will be covered over later, but we do need this undercoat first. We should finish everything that needs to be done in this blue palette before we move on to the brighter colours. So we'll put a little bit of foliage here in the foreground. We might see it later, we might not. And a few here. And then up on the side, I need something coming into the picture. There's too much light on the sides of the picture. So let's have a bit of foliage coming in here. That'll bring your eye into the picture. That's too dark. I think I'll put a little bit of highlight on top of that. Bring it forward again. So we put a little bit of, that's a bit of raw sienna and white. That brings it forward. And then it needs a few little branches later. Do you see how it comes forward again? And it turns a little bit green when it touches the blue paint. Now for our foreground palette, Burnt Sienna, Prussian Blue, Warm Red, Warm Yellow, Raw Sienna again, and I still have some Ultramarine there, and plenty of white. We'll mix some of these colours together. Don't mix them completely. It's the Red and the Burnt Sienna and the Blue, and that'll give us quite a dark colour. It's a brown we're looking for. We're working in browns now. This is not crimson anymore. This is bright red. This is a foreground colour. And you'll see how it'll stand forward of the other colours we've been using. Over here I'll mix another colour. And up here we'll have all the pretty colours that go in the light coloured bark. Pick up plenty of white and we're ready to paint a tree. Down through there? No, no, not there. I don't know where to put it. I'm not going to put it there because I don't want to destroy that side of the painting. We'll have to put it over this side. Let's have it right down through there. That's one, it's leaning into the picture, plenty of white paint, and another one here. My undercoat is just about dry now, so I'm painting wet on dry paint. You can paint wet on wet, you do exactly the same as I'm doing here. You see how it comes forward? These trees need to come forward of the background, so they're big trees. Plenty of white paint, plenty on. Let's bring a branch in from here. We'll have a wobbly branch. And another one in there. Now the colours. We put those browns on here and there. Pick up plenty of paint. The forks of the trees have all got a lot of bark hanging in them. So I'll put that in, the darks for that. The butts of the trees have got plenty of darks. Down the big trunks is all colours. Let's start with a little bit of red. And then we'll put a little bit of yellow in. And then with our hog bristle brush, Brush them in, blend the wet paints together. 
If you're working in oils or acrylics, you do exactly what I'm doing here. I've loaded my brush with white on one side and I'm blending in. That's leaving a white line down the side of the trunk, which we want. Don't keep going over it. Don't go backwards and forwards over it until you've got nothing left. It must look rustic. Now we start on the other tree, clean the brush and brush in the little bit of paint that's there into the wet paint underneath. If your paint dries, in the meantime, put some more white on. Now I've loaded the brush with big hunks of the brown paint and we'll put in a bit of detail. Again, do not be too fussy with your work. Just put it on and come back later and fix it if you have to, but you shouldn't have to. Now with the brush with a little bit of lighter colours on, I'll come back and tone some of them very dark colours down. Just a few brush strokes here and there, not much. Fill in the bottom of your trunk with big bold brush strokes. Clean the brush down here. Here there's another branch coming through. Big bold brush strokes again. And in the fork, every time, have some darks. If there's bits missing, fill the little bits in with your dark paint. Clean the brush again. Now for our log. I'll load my painting knife with many dark colours on one side and light colours on the other side. So we've got a lot of dark and light on the one side of the knife. And then sculpture on your log. Oh, I've got my light on the wrong side. That doesn't matter. We can put the light back on in a moment. Now again, do not go back over your work. Clean the knife, reload it, and put the darks on. I'll take that bit of white off there and put it along the top. The light should have been on the top of the knife there. Clean the knife very well. Pick up your colours and sculpture on the log. The dark should be underneath, so let's put the dark underneath. This is very dark here. It looks like there's a hole in the log. That's what we want. And a few bits and pieces here. Of course, have it facing into the picture. You see along the edge of the log there, I've loaded my knife with light colours, and we can put a little bit of what looks like bark on top of the log. Just lay it on. There's a very white line along the top of the log. That looks like a bit of light shining off the top of the log. And now with a little soft haired brush, twiddle in a branch. Then we know it is an old log laying there. A few branches underneath. And a few branches here and there. Clean your brush down the bottom. And with a fan brush, we can touch up under the log. Just put it on, lift it up. Clean the fan brush. Put it on, lift it up. Put it on, lift it up. We'll have some paint on that. Put some paint down and this will make good grass. Put some light, some dark underneath and bring it up with a fan brush. So we're making it up as we go along. We add the things we need. If there's something there that looks good, leave it. If it doesn't look so good, put the grass over the top. Bit more paint, bit more grass. You make yours up as you go along. Light and dark. Everything is from light to dark. Don't let any white get into here, into your paint now. And again here we can make more grass, the same method. I keep picking up the warm yellow, but because my brush is dirty with the browns, the yellow doesn't come out yellow, it comes out a browny colour. We'll put some colour here on the masking tape, that's dark and light, and pull it up into the picture. And this will give the effect that the grass is coming up from outside the frame of the picture, which looks good. Dab, dab, dab. You dab harder and you get a darker colour. I'll fill in that little bit. I don't want to track the eye to that area there. I want your eye looking over the top and past there. Now a bit of detail. A little round soft brush. I've loaded it with dark on one side, light on the other. And when needed, I can turn the white onto the canvas and pull it down give me a white edge on the bark hanging off the tree. This is a great little brush stroke. You might want to practice it on a spare piece of board. 
And just here, because I've got the little brush in my hand, I'll fill in a little bit, just dab a little bit of detail there. And a few little branches. And a little bit of detail on the end of our log. A little bit of light around the end of the log. A few branches on a tree on the right. And a few horizontal lines here to make the area look flat. Paint a branch or two up into your painting from the big tree. This is to stop your eye travelling up the tree. And also, it looks very effective with the contrast of the blue background and the dark branches. Hold your brush with two fingers. You can twiddle the branches off by holding your brush with two fingers. Now a bit of detail on the tree again, and the contrast again from the background to the foreground will come out when you put these darks on. These are the colours we mixed earlier out of the reds and the blue and the burnt sienna all together. You never know what colour is going to come off your brush. A few more branches here and there. Not too many. Keep them jagged. You see I've loaded the brush with white and dark. Put it on, turn it, pull it down. That's to get the bark coming off. And just here in the middle of the picture, I'd like to see some very prominent bits of dark right here to emphasise the contrast in the middle of the picture. Now with a big foliage brush, I've loaded it with dark on one side and light on the other. We'll dab in some trees on this side. There's too much light there on the side. Dab, dab, dab just to fill in that light spot there and a few branches and give us a border on the edge of the painting and then it's time to dab 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 the foliage on our big tree load your brush carefully and dab it almost perpendicular on and get this foliage look not too much it's a good idea to practice this brush stroke on a spare piece of board before putting them on your painting then to finish our painting off, add your signature. I'm quite pleased with that painting. You take your time, follow along. Don't be too fussy with your brush strokes. Do try and get the very pale background and the very strong foreground. And then you'll get amazing contrast. Looks so much better with the masking tape off. And I think a couple of little birds go well here. It's a birds coming towards us. Just do them with a fine brush and your darkest colour. A thank you and I hope to see you again.